bags are packed, are you ready to go? This time tomorrow we'll be on the road Riding with you in the sunnier days I wouldn't want it any other I'm sorry, I'm not in frame here. Uh, welcome back to Children of Erte. We're so excited to see you. Yay! Um, <laughs> as for usual, let's jump to Adam and start with our sponsors. Yeah. Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms, thank you for your continued support. You can grab an Electrum chest code on the overlay or bouncing around in chat. We also have Die Hard Dice, who has supplied our cast with, here we go, down the list. Beckett's bringers of benevolence and sometimes belligerence. <laughs> that might be good. the best yet. <laughs> That's real good. So use the code Erte to get 10% off your order at Die Hard Dice. And we are also giving away a $20 gift uh, promo code during the show. Pay attention to chat for the instructions on how to enter that. And finally, tonight, you'll hear the dulcet tones of Sirenscape. Because epic games need epic sound. I am Adam Bradford. I'm the CDO at Demiplane. And tonight I am playing your dimensionally displaced magical super fan, Silas Sorrell. Hi, everybody. I'm Alicia Marie. You can find me on socials at Alicia Marie Body. I'm a costume artist and professional RPG performer. And uh, to keep it quick, yeah, it's almost Halloween. Right now, <laughs> I am playing Feruza Armstrong. Attorney at law who is currently lassoed by a doll. You got you got cut free. You just got cut free by Maeve. But I still have paper cuts from the paper dolls. You do. You have lots of paper cuts. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get some Neosporin on this. <laughs> <laughs> it stings. The next really one, the dolls are going to start spraying you with lemon juice. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 it's so mean. oh, terrible. <laughs> well, there it is. You let all That's got to be a recharge six. <laughs> <at least. laughs> oh, it's so mean. It's so cruel. <laughs> Um, hello, I am Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on socials as at DreamWisp. Um, I stream on Twitch as DreamWisp Jen. I do uh, all the things. Um, check out the various things, including Dreams and Machines. And tonight I am playing your friendly neighborhood troublemaker, Maeve Morgan Flynn, who is currently disguised as Robin Beckett. And uh, as there, are, Robin Beckett. Like, there, are, there are five of us. <laughs> That's not going to get confusing at all. Hi, I'm yeah. Lauren Urban. I'm the content manager over at Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find me on the socials as Oba Lauren. You can find me this weekend at PAX West on a panel on Friday called Wrong Answers Only, Bad Advice from Great DMs. Yeah. <laughs> part two, because part one wasn't enough because it was a ridiculous amount of fun. So yeah, I'm on this awesome panel with um, Dr. B and Tiny to Pass and um, the Mackenzie from Wizards of the Coast and HTT Paladin mm -hmm. and Amelia Herbst. And we're all just going to give the worst advice ever. So yeah, come and hear all the bad advice. Uh, tonight I'm playing Neb, who constantly tells herself bad advice, like going into a room with all kinds of dolls and trying to get along with them. <laughs> Is it me already? It's you. Yeah, oh. feeding right through it. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Hope Lavelle. You can follow me on the socials as the Hope Lavelle. You can watch me as a Dungeon Master on Misfits of Alceta, but not tomorrow because we're taking our monthly break, but we'll be back in another week. Um, and tonight I am playing Miss Robin Beckett, who... Just looking for shinies. <laughs> Grandmama. <laughs> Grandmama. <laughs> and I'm Deborah Amwell. I am your cosmic GM for the evening. It's very good to see you all. Um, thank you. Welcome to Children of Rete. We're so excited to dive into the 57th. Did I get it right this time? Yes. Chapter of Children of Rete. Um, yeah, so let's settle in, get something warm or cool, wherever you are, uh, cozy to, to get ready for this episode. 
So we were in the middle of drama at the end of the last episode. Let me see if I can remember where we all were. <laughs> so I think we had just left. Silas had flown his way through the door into the back room where there was a single candle and a shadow projected on the wall that then attempted to attack his shadow. And as it did, he felt the wind of the mist attack breeze by his face. Um, I believe Feruza, you are still in the room with the dolls, surrounded by uh, a number of them. You have been de by Maeve, who sliced through a number of the um, uh, the threads. Um, Pivim is at your feet, having kill build his way through, leaving just cotton stuffing and shavings of wood in his path. Um, <laughs> Um, Neb, you got teleported out of the room, so I think are now standing on the front porch near Maeve um, at the moment. And Robin, are you, you're still in the room, is that, is that true? I yes. I think I had moved towards the back. Yes, you'd moved towards the back. You were, right, the... you were Pied Pipering, the uh, <laughs> Pied Mama-ing uh, all of the dolls to come with you. And yes, indeed, the, the China dolls and the Matryoshka dolls are all turned and meaning to follow in your direction. Um, we have the uh, paper dolls are all standing all on top of Feruza. The um, marionettes are still near Feruza, as well as the nutcrackers are still <laughs> with Feruza. Nice. So fascinating. So we just finished uh, with this leopard shadow as it attempted to uh, slice its claws into Silas's shadow. We're gonna come back into the main room here with Feruza. Right up at the bat, Feruza, I would like you to take, oh, two persistent bleed damage because these paper cuts oh, are just no. what continuing to mean? just drip little uh, bits of okay. blood. Okay, two and persistent. Now you're here bleed damage okay got that down yuck and it's my turn now it is your turn okay her arms and her legs are free and i guess as a free move action she's she's trying to scramble to her feet because it's yes. not does not help to be on the ground with no. ground level creatures she's gonna scramble to her feet if she can stand up is you that... can stand up absolutely you can stand up they have not totally gulliver traveled you um, mm -hmm. you, they <laughs> were attempting it, but Maeve saved you. So yes, you stand up, the, the um, strings oh. falling to the ground. The paper dolls, however, hang on to your clothes. They're so light and they have, you know, those little perforated edges that they can kind of stick into your clothing. So they're holding on as you stand up. The little things are holding on. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're attached. But, and the little things, so just the paper dolls are attached, but there yes. are still Nutcracker like, the and and uh, and marionette dolls are all surrounding you. Pivim is at your feet now as well. Okay, and the ones that are stuck to me, are they continuing to cut me as they're stuck to me? Y yes, because the persistent bleed. They are just there. Just yes. Cutting me? Uh, yeah, just paper cutting you. Oh, oh. They're just hanging no. out. Oh, 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 heck no. This is the like hierarchy of need situation here, okay? <laughs> Immediately? Her face flashes. She's looking at herself and she just clenches her fist. And as she does it, you're gonna see just electricity like just running through her body. She just wants to sh shock everything that's on her. Oh! <laughs> God. I'm trying to, I think that would just be like an unarmed strike, like static shock maybe. Okay, great. I'm with that. Yeah. yeah so give me, give me, a, give me a, let's just do, let's just do like, um, what would be good like uh yeah like a static like do like just do your like a melee attack it's almost like you're just brushing them off but you're like, doing it with your yes yeah, so basically yeah, yeah, the yeah. So like i have an advantage yeah it seems to have been plus okay we'll see what we get here and then oh forget it 25 boom <laughs> so you just kind of like shake with electricity and all of them go and fry a little bit. The ones that are on you fry a little bit. There's a little <laughs> wisp of smoke as they all sort of float to the ground, singed pieces of paper. There are more paper dolls though, getting up, pulling themselves as the pages turn, more of them pull themselves off of it. But even just like a little dress with no head or legs pulls itself off and is hopping towards you. Little pairs of shoes are just making their way across the table, getting ready to leap. Um, but currently you have no no paper dolls on you. 
And with that, she's going, with her extra attack, she's literally just going to, like, with her axe, she's just gonna swing at her feet like a golf club with her axe at, I guess, whatever one is closest to her. Yeah. Avoiding Pivum. You can avoid Pivum. Okay. So this will be- I mean, he does look like a doll. Uh, it's scary, right? <laughs> he looks like, he's oh, right in there. This is like battleground for Pivum, right? He's like eye to eye with these porcelain dolls, just like, like toe to toe, nose to nose. Oh yeah. So I got a 15. Okay. Um, to hit, and then it would be like, it's the one that's nearest him. Uh, okay, cool. 12 points of damage, 12 points of damage. Fantastic. You punt that thing. It goes flying into the air, psh, over to the other Four. side. Yeah, hitting the wall at the other side, just like Ooh. shattering into little pieces of wood uh, as it, you know, clatters to the ground. Uh, anything else, Fariza? That's, that's it for me. That's it. All right, marionettes. Marionettes, they get their 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 strings sliced by Maeve. A couple of the other ones, you know, fall to pieces and they <sighs> turn towards you and Pivum. Uh, two of them are going to attack you, Maeve, and one of them is going to go after Pivum. Oh, no. All right, I have a 15 and a 21 to hit you, Maeve. Uh, so the first one will, uh, they both will hit but okay. they will hit my duplicates. That's right. So as they lasso with their, their their strings and fling them forward, you see the little flicker of your duplicates kind of wink out of existence as the, the ropes go through um, two of them, two, two Robins. Um, the one that's going after Pivum, holy crud, is absolutely going to hit um, Pivum gets wrapped up in these strings that get flung away from one of the marionettes. He immediately loses his feet and starts to get rolled up in them like a like a fruit roll-up. Um, as he gets kind of, his arms clasped down at his side, his daggers as he tries to sort of struggle free. Um, Neb, it is now your turn. You have been teleported outside. Um, what would you like to do? So Feruza and uh, Pivum are inside, and um, and Robin, and Robin, but Robin... and Maeve has stepped inside enough to kind of deal with these marionettes here. Okay, yeah. but it's mostly Feruza and Pivum, Pivum who have taken the most damage, right? Yes, okay. they are surrounded. The, the other ones are beginning. You can see this tide of dolls begin to follow Robin towards the back of the room. Okay. Uh, and, and Neb is looking a little hurt herself from a lot of Matryoshka dolls. So she's like <laughs> holding her side and looks in going, Silas! It... Oh no. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. And as she's reaching into our pocket, her uh, form changes into mm -hmm. that luminescent uh, nebula form in the blues and the purples. But there's something a little different about it. She, when she pulls out her rock instead, it's almost like a bowl in her hand that is uh, vibrant with kind of this cooling blue energy. And she's gonna toss it into the room. Um, <laughs> as I am going to get my healing sparkles going in the room, I can place it up to 60 feet from me. Okay. Um, and I'd like to put it in a place in where it's next to Feruza and Pivum so yep. that they can get some healing. They're right uh, there next to each other. Yeah, so she tosses this bowl and it kind of spins in the air and lands and then it's her rock again, but now there's the swirling nebula around it. Um, so Pivum and Feruza can each get, I always have to look this up, I'm so sorry, uh, a, a d6 worth of hit points. Okay. Um, and then uh, some of that actually splashes back onto Neb as that happens. She's a little surprised by it, but then, oh, that's, that's, that's a lot better. Okay, that's a lot better. And she'll stay in this form and be like, Silas! <laughs> Miss Robin, can you stop being grandma, mama, 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 and like tell them to stop attacking us? And that's going to be my turn. Fantastic. Yes, your little, your little matryoshka-sized bite marks, uh, the bruising from that starts to, to, to fill in a little bit. Um, all right, that is Neb. Robin, your turn. Um, uh, Robin heard what Neb said, and and is very much like, you're right. Everyone now. Calm down, come here, come here, stop attacking my friends. Listen to your mama, grandmama, listen to me. 
Um, are you using magic to do this, or are you just attempting to persuade them? I'm just attempting to persuade. Fantastic. Give me an advantaged per, um, persuasion check. Oh, yeah, a 19. A 19. Um, your kindliest grandmama voice with that little quaver comes out. Um, it sounds so warm and inviting, just like a, a cup of tea. <laughs> rolling off the tongue and you do indeed see a number of the paper dolls and nutcrackers and marionettes kind of stop and they turn to look at you and their faces change as soon as they put their focus on you <gasps> they're like <sighs> turns into smiles their growls and grimaces suddenly start to be smiles and while they don't necessarily like Pivim is still wrapped up in some threads. The marionettes do kind of turn your way um, as they hear your voice. Anything else you'd like to do? No, but so they don't move. Well, not yet. But um, oh, right, 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 right. I'll <laughs> um, uh, uh, if that was, yeah. Um, I think uh, there's there's another door here, yes? There's, yes, this door that uh, Silas went through into the back room. Oh, and, and did he I closed see him? it behind him. Did I see him go through? Totally, right, Silas? You just flew through the room. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Silas is not subtle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I Super think Ro Silas. Robin's just going to. Um... Tall, dark, streak of light. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Robin just okay. maybe wants to kind of pull them all into a corner. I think uh, maybe. Yeah, I don't think she'd want to lead them out. You know what she's going to do? She's going to just, like, kind of sit down first, like, kind of kneel down and, like, open up her backpack <laughs> in hopes that they'll jump in. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Did you so know Robin had an army? Robin has an army now. How'd she get an army? <laughs> so, Robin, you sit down against the wall next to the door where Silas you know, went through and just open your bag and say, <laughs> stop attacking my friends. Come here, little dollies. Um, yeah, yeah. And they all sort of seem to notice you. Okay. Um, all right, Robin, thank you so much. <laughs> so the paper dolls that were focused originally on Feruza have now sort of shifted their attention. The little shoes, you know, turn, pivot to look your way. The little dresses turn on end and just become flat pieces of paper for the rest of you. And they jump down off the table and they begin to, you know, pivot their way, coming forward, moving towards Robin. Uh, they don't move very fast, but a couple of them do little like somersault flips. A couple of them crumple up. Oh, yeah. Uh, a couple of them crumple up into balls and roll like tumbleweeds forward. Does that um, evoke any atta opportunity attacks? Well, they're just moving through themselves. Okay. Uh, so they're not attacking each other. All the dolls are fairly friendly. Um, but yeah, no ob attacks. They're just moving in your direction, uh, Robin. Uh, it is now Pivim's turn. Pivim is all, you know, dolled up this as the, the marionette dolls turn and start to move. They're dragging. They're, it looks like they're going to drag Pivim all Gulliver travel, you know, rolled up behind them. Um, so he is going to attempt to strength his way out of this. Oh, <gasps> that is a natural 20! Pivim! Yes, so Pivim! <laughs> hulks his way out he just dances every sorry i got so excited i swallowed my spit um <laughs> he just tenses and it's like muscles he like hulk hogan's uh through these these ropes and just bursts these these uh these strings as he pops out and jumps to his feet <laughs> Pivim growls at everyone around him um and just as a bonus action, he is going to turn into a badger. Um, yes. Just a just a ferocious, ferocious little badger. He's still about their size, but his teeth are much, much sharper. That is Pivim's turn. We now go into the room with Silas. Silas, you can hear vaguely through the door. It's it's pretty good sound protection through here, but you just start to hear maybe Robin going. Come here, my dollies, you know, sure thing. And, and maybe, um, you know, the rah of Pivim. 
but your eyes are trained on the, you know, the blank walls of this room and the single candle that is casting your own shadow on the wall, as well as a shadow of a leopard that just attempted to swipe its claws at your shadow. What would you like to do? Um, just a um, cursory, quick glance. Do I see any structures or anything else in the room with me? Uh, cursory glance, or do you want to make a check? I, I, I definitely do. It is cursory. I have cursory, other things yeah. I want to do, so I'm just kind of scanning. Okay. Um, no, and, and this again, is a I'm just blank for room. Large things. Okay. okay. No, I mean there there are windows with curtains on them. Uh, you know, two windows with curtains on them, but this. But this there room isn't is like, like a desk in the walls. corner or anything. Not a piece like of furniture. That. Yeah. Yeah, no. yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, so um, you hear uh, just a little uh, kind of uh, you know. Uh, you know, rhythmic drum beat just barely start, um, you know, kind of, um, you know, where, where you are. And then uh, Silas just raises his voice and says, I can feel it coming in the air tonight. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> and then it, it, it starts kind of getting a little bit, you know, louder. And he says, and I wonder what will happen without this light. And so uh, he's going to kind of like hover backwards from wherever he was just uh -huh. attacked. Uh -huh. And telekinetically, I'm snuffing the candle. So that unseen force that I have can do right. anything that a person can do. Right. So I'm trying to see if I can snuff out the light first. As this unseen force does, it flickers, but does not go out. Okay. So then with that, um, as I see the unforced, uh, uh, unseen force try to do that, yep. then I am going to, um, uh, I am going to take the candle. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm going to try to grab it, Okay. the candle, and then I am flying back to the door and trying to get through the door. Okay. So you mm -hmm. go over to grab this candle, which is stuck. It's candle, you know, the the taper holder and the candle itself are quite firmly stuck to the ground in the center of this room. Then I start just uh, curb stomping the candle, seeing if the wax or anything else will, uh, I, I'm trying to see if the candle yes. can be destroyed by any type of conventional means. So you start kicking at it. You start hitting at it. Anything that you do does not seem to break or damage this candle. It the light will flicker as you move through the fire, but you you blow at it. It doesn't seem to blow out. You try to grab it. It does not go out. Okay, got it. Um, so then, um, is it, do, do I have anything left that I can try to do here? Or so I would say your uh, your your special attempt was that an action or bonus action it, that was a bonus action, bonus action. Yes. So i would say then your action was to try to destroy okay. this thing so you can have movement or i would even allow no nah, that's an action so you have movement. okay then then uh i am going to uh float into a corner mm -hmm. um and i'm I, you basically see silas just do this okay and he goes like that right there and he's just floating in a corner where it can theoretically only get to him you know two two separate directions so as you float into the corner your shadow behind you gets smaller or you know or gets more and more the same as you so as you press your back into the wall there's only that little rim of shadow, maybe a little bit more over your head as this can candle on the floor casts the, the, the shadow behind you. Okay. At that point, you see this leopard shadow on the wall opposite. It begins to stalk around the edge of the wall, passing over the door, over the window and the curtains coming closer to you. As it does, it gets low. <laughs> and leaps, jumping with its jaws wide open. You can see the shadow reflection of these teeth as it attempts to attack just the little inch of shadow that is spread. So please add a, what is your AC? Uh, 18. 18, okay. But it can be higher if I'd like it to be. I flubbed. So it tries, you see it 
trying to attack this little rim of shadow around your body and it just can't seem to quite figure out how to get at it. However, as it does, you do feel, again, air, something moving in the space around you. Um, after after I see that attack, can I take a reaction to just simply, like if I'm feeling air, can yes. can I just move my hand through yes, it? Yes, I will allow that. Of, just to see if there is, I, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm fine with using my reaction to do that. You can use your reaction to do that. You feel no resistance. Okay. There is All nothing, right. at least there is no invisible solid thing right near your body. Got it. Perfect. Cool. All right. Um, we're going to move on to, oh, the Nutcrackers. Uh, <laughs> the Nutcrackers turn. It start. They start to chomp their teeth as they jump, hopping forward past, uh, you know, away from Pivim and, uh, and Feruza as they start to march towards you, uh, Robin. Feruza and Pivim can take an off attack if they would like it. Oh, Do you want to hit really? a Nutcracker, yeah. Feruza? I mean, she hesitates because she remembers like being in her aunt's like pristine living room with all the, <laughs> but you know, the thing attacked her. So as it's walking away, she just yes. instinctively is going to swing at it with her, um, with her ax the same Fantastic. way she swung before. Yes, an instinctive off attack. Yep. So this is a 18. Boom. <laughs> You crush it. It's just pieces on the floor. If, if its teeth still remain, they just continue to chomp, 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 and try to move toward Robin, but they they, they do nothing else. Uh, Pivim's little honey badger absolutely pounces on one of the porcelain dolls and just starts ripping it to shreds. So the porcelain head, hands, and feet begin to shatter underneath his teeth as he then pulls it up, like tearing the stuffing out like a dog with a chew toy, uh, just demolishing this little doll on <laughs> oh, the ground. Oh, him, was um, that necessary? <laughs> he picks up, he sits up with just like thread and cotton in his badger mouth. Um, all right, hey, that was care. the Nutcrackers. Uh, Maeve, your turn. All right, um, what is still attacking Feruza. Currently nothing. Everything um, has turned to go Everything has to... turned towards Robin. Um, now, not all of them have started to move yet, but yes, they are all seem to be focused on her. I mean, they seem to be, she seems to have them under control, so I'm going to start heading toward where Silas went. Okay. Uh, you pick your way delicately, <laughs> trying not to disturb any of these dolls that are, you know, about up to your mid calf or knee at the tallest uh, as you make your way very gently towards that door. Uh, as you get to the door, um, you see it is closed. And that's about all. What would I do? Um, is it locked? Does it look locked? Silas did not lock it. Uh, there is a keyhole on this one side, and Silas had seen something on the other side, but I think he chose not to lock it after all. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and. and open the door and and get in there because uh, actually before i do can i hear anything happening in there um casually without a check uh sure or do casually. you want to use your action um just casually I'll listen. casually without a check um i'll i'll offer you here um <laughs> silas you want to sing it again <laughs> <laughs> Oh Lord, oh uh, Lord. Just very, very, like no musical accompaniment. Only Silas is hearing the drums. Oh, he's you just hear Silas. Oh would, no, I'm doing would. some kind of illusory <laughs> okay. something. All right, there's something. All right, there's At least hear a little bit. There's, there's a, a little, little bit of synthesizer of on the voice. I'm just yeah, saying that's at a lower register, right? Sure. So through the door, mostly what oh, Maeve yeah. is hearing is mm -hmm. your falsetto peeking through at the top that's there. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll rip the door open. Okay. <laughs> you push the door open. As it opens, you see this leopard shadow kind of raw, you know, trying to scramble up the wall, onto the ceiling, around Silas, who's tucked into the corner as tight as he can be, as it tries to scrape at its shadow. As you open the door and step in, both Silas and this shadowy creature seem to stop and turn your way. 
everything else. Um, do I see my own shadow reflected on the wall? Uh, if you step in and you look behind you, yes, you can just see on the door frame your shadow behind you. Okay. Um, and there are still three of you that look like Robin, yes? Mm -hmm. Cool, okay. Stepping into this room. So yeah, Silas, you see three of Robin uh, walking this room. <laughs> yeah, I won't I say would... anything yet because I don't know what kind of timing this is happening. But sure, it's <laughs> happening right I after. Explain when, yes. I want to... I would like to um, use all three of me to yes. kind of make a shadow puppet on the wall of like a monster. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So with, with teeth and like, like three robins start aiming it toward a T Rex. <laughs> three robins in a trench coat. <laughs> three robins in a trench coat. Yeah, make a exactly. little monster with all the shadow yeah. puppet edition and and <laughs> turn it towards uh, toward the uh, the shadow that I see attacking Silas fantastic um amazing uh you create this thing it turns the the leopard without being able to do much yet absolutely takes notice of this creature now that has been created as a shadow on the wall with your three or three of you okay okay fantastic um porcelain dolls they're the ones closest to you robin all of them walking towards you you know, st st stuck, straight-legged in their arms, sort of sticking out, walk up and each one says, Mama, Mama, as they see the open bag. Um... Oh no, uh, that is a four for a wisdom saving throw. Uh, they start to march into your bag. Uh, the first one, tips in head first and just topples over and disappears. The swarm of porcelain dolls after it also follow it like sheep over a ledge and just topple into your bag. It's amazingly, it's, it's surprisingly roomy in there. It's surprisingly roomy in there. Um, all of these dolls are just, you know, happily falling in. Porcelain uh, wings. <laughs> the the Matrushka dolls are next. They come up towards you as they do their little their little uh uh, uh like coconut mouths. <laughs> <laughs> little, little horse hooves as they come by and let's see how they do on their wisdom. That's a one. <laughs> what? They don't just walk in, they run. These Matryoshka dolls, like uh, cards, they open and close, open and close. They're so excited and they just roll into your bag one after another oh um, as the Matryoshka dolls fall into your backpack. Your backpack, despite the fact that it is, you know, seems to be easily taking in all of these dolls, it does seem to be getting a little bigger, but not at the rate that it should, you know, it's just like, expanding a little to sort of make room for all these things. Um, Feruza, it is your turn. Um, Feruza is literally standing there with her axe in her hand, watching all these dolls walk toward Robin, like incredulous, like what the heck is going on here? <laughs> and she's gonna look at Robin and say, is this like a Pied Piper moment? Are you gonna like do something with those, Miss Robin? I mean, I'm collecting them. But why? Because they're shiny. <laughs> and so Feruza right now is weighing whether whether or not this is like a dangerous situation or something that, you know, she should be, but then right when that happens, she notices like May, Robin, Maeve walk by. And <laughs> I guess <laughs> what I would like to do is when Maeve opens the door. Yes. Feruza would like to take it, but she sort of like snatches it and rips the door off the hinges. So she's standing there with her ax in one hand and her door in another. All right, strength check, please. Feruza Armstrong, Feruza. destroyer of doors. Destroyer of doors. <laughs> what is your strength check to, to rip this door off its hinges? Come on, man. Oh, natural 20. Oh my God. <laughs> You are the destroyer of doors. That's the only way that I love it. So yes, Marusa, one-handed with an axe, you reach out and grab this door and just 
rip it off its hinges. It goes flying across the room and lands on top of a bunch of dolls that just immediately get bowled over. Um, you know, but the door is sort of still flopping underneath them as they're trying to get up and move towards Robin. Uh, anything nope. else, Faruza? Nope. Nope. She's just standing okay. in the doorway. Fantastic. The marionettes. Um, they've been, you know, released from Pivum. Uh, they are also kind of walking, you know, sort of floppily. They're very woody uh, 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 from Toy Story. Yes, they have no, you know, they just have joints. So they sort of floppily move towards you, um, Robin, when they arrive. Okay. They stop when they get to the bag. And they've seen now the porcelain dolls and the matryoshka dolls just go like falling into nothing. And they all sort of stop and they look up at you, you know, their heads kind of oddly cocked to one side as the joints in their neck don't control their heads very well and kind of look at you and you can tell the clear question intonation say, mama? <laughs> um, that's going to be their turn. They do not go into the bag, but you are now surrounded by uh, skeptical marionettes. <laughs> um, Neb, it is your turn. Okay, so what the only things that are left outside of the bag are these marionettes and the, the paper dolls, right? The paper dolls are still on their way, yes. And the nutcrackers are still on their way. They have okay. not to the bag yet. <laughs> paper dolls and nutcrackers were far. They've kind of uh, collected themselves and moved towards her open bag in some sort of line. Yes, everyone I'm is assuming. attempting, all the dolls appear to be attempting to move towards Robin. Um, the the uh, porcelain dolls have gone in. The Matrushka dolls have gone in, the marionettes are skeptical, and the Nutcracker and the paper dolls are on their way. Okay. And one last question. Robin, is did you open the bag like on the ground or you have it up like it's a doorway or I, something? I like sat on the ground and kind of plopped it in front of me and just opened it. Perfect. Uh, Neb is going to glowing walk into the room, but as she passes through the doorway, the colors all drain back out um the swirling on the ground is still there to yes. help anybody who needs some healing sparkles uh, yes. but she's gonna look at a very a line of things and her eyes narrow <laughs> i think it's time to go bowling and then she is going to lean forward <laughs> and there's gonna be a moose in the house <laughs> Okay. And then she'll lower. A moose and a badger. A moose and a badger in the house. Yeah. Amazing. And she's going to do what she kind of did when we were in the uh, in the town, where she bowled through a whole bunch of zombies, except in this case, she's going to try to use those horns and just push them all into the bag. Okay. Um, let's see. <clears throat> let's make this a dexterity check as a moose. Okay. <laughs> Um, You're doing some scooping. He's yep. gonna do some scooping. Let's see. Some moosey scooping. Well, that's my natural 20 for the day. <laughs> which gives my moose a 20. For sure. <laughs> Get your natural 20s against the little dolls. I love it. Oh, I'm uh, here for it. <laughs> I would like to go bowling with marionettes, please. Boom, so you rush forward. Um, and you, these marionettes that are sort of skeptical and looking at Robin like, mm, what, what are you up to, old lady? Uh, you just pop them all in, just boop, 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 boop. You like bowling. They just fall over like pins into the little bag. In fact, you hear a little, ah, ah, ah. One so gives a Wilhelm good. scream. Absolutely. <laughs> ah. Uh, as they go in, into the darkness of, of Robin's backpack, um, you successfully dump all of the marionettes into her bag. And I'll I'll raise my head a little bit because Robin's now sitting on the ground. I'm this giant moose. So I'm yes. just gonna like eye eye to eye Robin, and, and then eye the whatever's left in the room. Okay. Um, yeah, nutcrackers and paper dolls that are still on their way. Uh, Robin, it is your turn. Um, <clears throat> wow, gee, Neb, thank you. And uh, <laughs> well, what is left? You said the paper dolls? Paper dolls and the nutcrackers are on their way. <clears throat> and and Feruza stepped past you and pulled the door off its hinges. Yeah. Maeve and Silas are in the back room. 
And Pivim is a honey badger standing, you know, tearing apart dolls on the other side of the room. You know, it's it's a Tuesday night. Yeah. I think uh, Robin is uh, is is getting getting just getting a little bit impatient. You know, like, oh, come here, let me let me help you, not cracker dolls. <laughs> and she's gonna get up with her bag. Oh she's gonna go over and try to scoop them into. Try the to scoop them. <laughs> Fantastic. Give me a dexterity uh, check. Versus their wisdom to see if they let you do this. That's a 17. And that's a 3. <laughs> <laughs> so, you stand up and go, let me help you. And you go to the paper dolls and literally just, like you're skimming the pool, you just <laughs> scoop them up into the bag. They all go, wee! <laughs> they fly through the air as little pieces of paper even the whole booklet now just kind of you know rolls you scoop the book and sweep it in like you're cleaning house and the booklet falls into your bag all of the paper dolls are now in your bag anything else robin uh i think on my next uh, i'll be i'll be there for the nutcrackers if okay they, if, if unless they reach me on their turn fantastic pivum <laughs> Uh, is going to run up towards one of the nutcrackers and try to bite it and carry it and drop it into your bag for you. And he's successful. He goes, he grabs this thing, picks it up in his honey badger teeth, kind of shaking it like a chew, chew toy, runs over to your bag and spits it out as just one of them falls into the darkness of your bag. Uh, but that's going to be Pivim's turn. He is then going to turn his attention towards Feruza and the door, kind of slowly sneaking his way towards that opening. All right, we are back up with Silas in the corner. You have seen three Robins enter the room and kind of work together to project this creepy, scary image, shadow puppet, uh, on the wall. The leopard has for sure, shadow has for sure taken notice of it. So um, the drumbeat continues mm -hmm. a little bit. And then um, Silas uh, sing Maeve like, so just real quick, I missed in the uh, excitement about the door being just pulled off its yes. hinges or whatever just happened. Was this that door yes. leading to this thing or the, yes, yes excellent. Maeve, she's um, taken the door off of this room. <laughs> excellent. So um, then Silas uh, is just going to like belt out as loud as he can. Wait, if you can see your shadow, this creature can hunt to kill. We need to light it up so bright until there's nothing left to fight. And as he says that, um, the do -do 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 -do, like the big, big, heavy thing sounds in there. And he's going to cast the light spell. The ring uh, ah! like floats up in front of him and just lets out like kind of a almost like disco glow as bright as that spell can do and then he's going to stay in the corner where hopefully he doesn't have a shadow anymore is what he's hoping fantastic so this is a tiny room so this light spell just supernova in the middle of the room um your shadow is obliter obliterated mave's shadow is obliterated um uh you know the thing shadow and, and you're trying to place it up above the so the candles on the ground yours is up at the ceiling like where a globe light would be so that really any shadow is just going to be a pinpoint on the wall so yours disappears Maeve, um your shadow creation that you made has shrunk down it is it is a barely recognizable but just like a spot behind the three of you um that's been kind of a pinpoint behind the leopard shadow exists, but it has now become very tiny. Uh, and it's just in the center of the room. So again, kind of where Maeve's shadow is, the only place that shadow can exist. It still exists, but it's little. It's a kitten. But it is still sort of interesting. It's a little, little tiny baby kitten leopard as it starts to try to stalk towards uh, her. So there's anything else, Silas? I am going to, with my uh, bonus mm -hmm. action, um, I'm going to uh, just uh, yell out, um, sing it with me, Maeve. And then um, I, I'm going to go right into the, the chorus again. I can feel it coming in the... And I'm just going to keep that going and uh, give some inspiration to Maeve. Amazing. So yeah, it's starting to jam in there. You know, it's now the leopard's turn. And as the leopard, the like little kitten leopard 
creature begins to start stalking across the room. It's like it's moving to the beat. Uh, and there's like a little flicker with the candle. It's like very psychedelic cool. Now, because it is so little, it slows down. It only makes it about a quarter of the way across to where Maeve is. Um, but it's, you know, it's dancing, prancing, moving as fast as it can around that room. Uh, Maeve, your turn. Uh, I, I would like to chomp chomp on the shadow. <laughs> so uh, how do you want to chomp chomp on the shadow with um, your... I mean, yeah, with, with the shadow creature that I created, I sort of want to... So, with your it's little, almost, it's almost baby shark. It's like <laughs> baby shark do, 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 starts to move across to intercept. I mean, it, it, if it's of... a cute little kitten, I don't want to be too too mean to. Well, but you're you're a you're a cute little monster. But, but now. I'll be I'll be yeah tiny tiny. But baby you guys shark, are the same size now. <laughs> Uh, so jump, yeah, so jump, as you jump, jump, jump. walk around the room, adjusting yourself with the light above and the light below to kind of direct your shadow across, as they meet halfway, go ahead and make an attack. Okay. Um, just, just a like standard. An unarmed, Roll your yeah, shadow like an, monster. An unarmed. Skill. No, because you're doing it. You're you're doing it just in the air. You know. So just an unarmed attack. Okay. So just a you know a d twenty plus your if you're proficient, uh, melee strength. That's a 12. That's a 12. Um, that, hold on. That is actually going to hit. So your little baby shark uh, chomps down on the front paw of this little leopard as it's getting up. Uh, <laughs> to, to, to Silas's feet. Um, it chomps Little tiny down. jaws theme as it goes. <laughs> <laughs> so you make this movement in thin air, and as your shadow does it and makes contact with that shadow, you see the little creature, the little leopard, pull its hand back, its little its little paw back, and kind of hunker down and give a little growl. Um, let's roll. Let's roll like a d6 of okay. choppy damage. Am I adding anything to it or just a flat no, just a flat, yeah. Two. Two. I did a twofer. Um, I mean, well, what is what is your strength uh, bonus? Uh, strength, not so much. Yeah. Uh, strength, strength is minus one. Is minus one. Okay, so we're going to say flat. We'll just call this flat. Uh, maybe maybe strong people will get a little more, but we'll say, yeah. So just two, two little damage on the paw from your baby shark shadow. But you do notice that your shadow puppet has an effect on this shadow creature. Cool. Uh, Maeve, anything else? Um, so that was my action and my... I haven't... Some mm. movement. Some movement, but there's... I think it's it, it, Silas. It's just so cute. <laughs> Kill it! Kill it now! It's not cute. It's not like that stupid upper room either. This place is horrible. Kill it all! Kill it all! Look! <laughs> and then Silas is just like he can't even help but be. Uh, pulled in and then like again just his memory of yeah. the Jaws theme like actually yeah. do, do like the real one kind of like oh. just echoes a little bit what she's doing and I'm like damn it <laughs> get out of my head Maeve uh, um, fantastic I, I anything else Maeve it. that's it for now that's all right cool back out in the other room the nutcrackers are now close enough to Robin to take a look at this bag Oh no. They also are not, that's a six. Uh, are just like, mama! <laughs> and they just dive head first into this bag. Like again, like uh, like rockets, they just or you know, like one of the, the synchronized swimmers as they like dive into the pool one after another, just boom, 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 boom. It's like that moment when you realize your kids maybe trust you too much when they just jump in off the pool or something when you are not ready. Like they're, just, they're doing it anyway. <laughs> so all of the dolls now have jumped into your bag, uh, save for the uh, uh, the ones that uh, Neb forced in. 
Um, they're all in there. Uh, that is the end of their turn. Feruza, your turn. You ripped the door off and are standing. You're watching this little shadow play of tiny little creatures on the wall in the room. Feruza is just looking around like she's entered a madhouse of people. <laughs> just standing there. I mean, meanwhile, she just ripped the door off the hinges. Like, does she still have the door? Did she, she threw it, right? She threw I, it. I did have you yeah, throw it. You can it. have kept it if you prefer, but I, I had you throw it. <laughs> She goes again. Okay, so maybe yeah, retcon. Maybe she does it. The okay, I don't know, you can matter. keep it. It's fine. They were all walking that way, anyways. I'm ca yeah. I'm happy to retcon that. I did that to you instead of asking. So, so she's basically just standing there, like at the ready, because yes. she sees all the dolls <laughs> heading towards Robin. She sees Robin, 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 and Silas in the room, and she sees, you know, Maeve. I guess Robin doing this at the wall. Yeah. Where is and Ned is um standing a near moose. the a moose. And Pivim's a honey Would badger. you allow me to take a reaction to say a sentence? Sure. If I spend my reaction on it, sure. I'm just going to say, uh, I, I'm just going to say, Feruza, little yeah. shadow creature on the wall needs to be killed with your own shadow. And then that, with that's my, all he's going to say. Feruza see your shadow? <laughs> uh, if you step into the room, you, I mean, you can go check and see. Do you go in? Oh, yeah, she's just going to step forward. Are you going to bring the, the door? Room? Yeah, with it. it has the door like in one like hand and the axe in the other. So you walk into the room <laughs> holding this door. Um, as you sort of take a look at yourself behind, again, it does cast a shadow, but the way that Silas has put this light up above and there's the candle below, again, you're tiny. You're a little tiny shadow, pinpoint of shadow from both of these light sources uh, on the wall. It's just a tiny little Feruza holding a door. She looks at Silas and goes, what? Just smash it with your shadow. And she looks over at Maeve and sees Maeve doing this. Yes, and you see goes, Maeve. Sma have, have, my, have my shadow smash some a, a little bit. think more smash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take your word for it, Silas, that this thing is an evil creature trying to kill us. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yes! Yes, this whole place is trying to kill us. All right, Maeve, stand back. I guess, you know, Cruz is going to roll up her sleeves. You, and... Yeah, you take Maeve's spot so that your shadow is in the right spot. Again, you're kind of checking and making sure everything is lined yeah. up. Because I don't really want to hit Maeve with the door. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> you are your size, as is the three of, of uh, Robin Maeve's. Um, and she's literally just going to... Like look over at the thing and look at Silas again, mm -hmm. and just heave ho the door on the thing. All right. So as you watch your shadow and attempt to kind of smash the door onto this leopard creature on the wall yeah. of your shadow. Okay. As, uh, as just you in... raise the door, can I make shark teeth on the door? Yes, absolutely. That we go from like a little shark fin to like a massive. Absolutely, a door with teeth. Uh, with spikes on it. Feruza, please uh, make an improvised weapon attack. Um, you are probably proficient with those, is my guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she's definitely That's proficient good. with doors with at this door. point. Yeah. In I'll give you either way. You have proficiency with door attacks. Um, that is not in the core rules. <laughs> <laughs> This is this is the the, the wool rules <laughs> here. Um, oh, 20, but dirty. See, a dirty twenty. We All love right. it. All right. So you absolutely hit with these teeth. Let's do two d six and add your strength modifier to it, Bruza. Okay. Two d six. Seven. Three ten. 10, all right. Mm -hmm. So 10 combined bludgeoning and uh, <laughs> door damage. and piercing damage um, from Maeve's teeth as well as Feruza's door. Um, get, yeah, yeah, absolutely, you smush this thing. Um, you see it kind of fall on the ground and as it kind of turns over, it just kind of dissipates and the shadow disappears. What were you doing in here, Silas? Playing well, with I mean, shadow puppets just, in the wall? I was just having a dance party, you know? <laughs> like, I, I just, uh, it, it's what I do when I need some kind of refuge from all the complete insanity that was going on upstairs. Or in that other room, rather. 
See, I feel like Dave, I've gone downstairs Dave, Dave, for some reason. Dave turns to Silas and says, the cheat? We have a the, light switch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is there a light switch? No, there's no, no light switch. Really. <laughs> I mean, and that's, he wouldn't that's have that's known. That's, that's uh, the only reason Maeve would know that is because she had friends who were about 10 years older than she was on base which was about 12 <laughs> maybe even a little younger who were who, who were showing her home star runner and uh mm. so she knew she knew the cheats light switch raves <laughs> that's the only oh, reason nice. she make that reference oh, yeah I, i'm justifying this so we are <laughs> out of initiative as all of the dolls are in Robin's bag and the shadow creature seems to have been taken care of, the candle still flickers on the ground between you all and your light is still up on the, the, the uh, ceiling above. There do not, you know, all this room is completely bare other than the curtains of, you know, across the windows. I think no other door. Like, like or anything. No other try door. And, try and extinguish it. What do you want to do? Go ahead. Oh, oh, try to extinguish the window. Um, the, oh, sorry, the window, the uh, candle. You can't. You try okay. and it just will not go out. And it, I, we can't lift it up? Nope. Well, somebody's trying to pee in on ground. And, No. <laughs> when Silas says that, a giant moose head just appears <laughs> in the door. <laughs> oh, hey, now. You asked, right? What? She's gonna. Oh, she's gonna a look honey at the badger in a garden. Silas, gnome, you're on scramble through its legs into the room and look at you all. Um, I've got to shrink down. There's no way I'm fitting through that door. I'm a large does, beast. Does, I'm assuming yeah. that Ned twist at all? Does it move? Like as does you, it? Yeah, as you attempt to do these things, it really doesn't move. It's it's like it's like a it's just a completely sturdy, solid almost like metal. I mean, it just will not bend. You can hardly do anything to it. Even the little wick is like solid. It, are we trying to make this candle not be a lighting the room anymore? Is that the whole well, point of this? Well, okay. Let, let me tell you a story. Okay. Always. Er, 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 everybody, you know, gather around. Let me tell you a story. Can we get Robin out of the other room? She has a bag of dolls in the first place. <laughs> oh, hallway. is she in the other room? Yeah, Miss Robin, like, are you okay? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, oh, wait a minute. Maeve, turn yeah, back. Okay, you have to be, you have to be Maeve or something, right? Like, is that what's going on here? And three Robins look at you and say, "So Do many I? Robins, so <laughs> many Robins." I, you know, reminds me of a dream I had. Uh, anyway, um, so I'm um, not going to ask. Yes. Um, to so ultimately, um, I flew into this room because I could see everybody was handling themselves fine up there. Like you didn't need me. And so I, I moved forward to scout ahead into this room. When I came in here, this really weird candle was on the ground and it was lit up and I saw my shadow. Um, but then I saw this shadow of some kind of, I don't know, panther, leopard. I don't know. It was one of the larger cats. Um, the kind that never come out at the zoo because it's always too hot and they're back inside because they're smart, right? Like that kind of cat. And it was on the wall but then I'm like, oh, nice, uh, you know, shadow. But then it attacks me, but I feel it like next to my face. I barely got out of the way with my lightning reflexes. Only way that that happened. <laughs> um, but I got out of the way and then I realized it's like, wait a minute, this is powered by the shadow. And so if we light this stuff up in here, then there aren't shadows then maybe that will weaken the creature. And it actually worked. Like sometimes a plan works and it actually worked this time. And then Maeve wanted to play with it for a little while or Miss Robin or whoever this is, um, wanted to play with it for a little while. Um, I think, you know, her heart wasn't really in it trying to kill it maybe. And then Farusa came along and I knew that she would follow through and just, you know, completely pound it to book. a pulp. <laughs> just... I didn't know what was happening in here, and th so th so this so she gestures to Ma to Maeve. This is this is Maeve because Maeve is Maeve is here, and Robin's. Oh out yeah, there she turns into people, doesn't she? Like, haven't we seen her do that before? You have not mm -hmm. ever seen that. Oh, uh, we've never yeah. seen that. No, that... uh, Faruza has. You have not. Bruce is the only one. Well, you you have, but you don't know you. Have. But you don't know you have. You you you, you, you uh... thought you, you were asleep. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we can we can. So Farouz is the only one Farouz that, is the that only has seen one this. Who's seen me do that? 
Uh, as far as I remember. But either, either way, there are three Robins, so Silas knows that something is something's clearly up. not, you know. And, and I Robins offer... and no Maves. <laughs> <laughs> three Robins and no Maves. Robin, have you stepped into this other room, or are you still in the front room? Oh, no, I'm counting my dolls. You're counting your dolls. <laughs> Robin, as you peek out the, you know, the wide open door now, um, you can see another Robin sitting on the ground, just like looking in her bag and chatting cheerily and kind of counting and pointing. Oh, whoops, I lost count. Start over. Very exciting. So did the dolls take Maeve away or uh, what, what's going on here? No, Maeve is in the room. We just don't know where, where she is in the room. Well, there's yes, four Maeve. Rob Maeve's so talented at hiding and disappearing. <laughs> I mean, she's not like there's literally no shadows in here. Like she's not hiding in this room. So is she like outside or what's going on? Well, there's four Robins. So I'm going to make a wild guess. Which one are you going to guess? Oh, I don't know which one. I mean, she's way oh. too good at that for me, but I'm just going to guess one of them. is. So what you think, May? you think Maeve is one of the Robins? That's my guess. Yes. So somebody has some, uh, you know, shiny new ability that they weren't going to tell anybody about. Because I tell y'all all of my abilities. I yeah. mean, I usually discover them as they go. I think the Robins want us to guess which one is Maeve. Well, I tell I you what, that... the two of you work on that. Um, <laughs> do, do, do we think we want to take care of this candle? Do you mind if I try something? Well, this feels a lot like Peter Pan. And <laughs> maybe one of these... <laughs> Sorry, I yeah. I'm butchering Robin's I mean, voice. <laughs> no, that's what I thought too, was it was very Neverland-esque. But then do we but... need to return the shadow to someone? Where? Do we need to sew it? I have a sewing machine. need to throw it outside to the bag jaguar in the tree. And let me go get my bag and I'll, 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 you'll see the three of the Robins walk out of the room. And I'm, I'm going to... I, I don't know if this is accurate or not. So okay. I hope how distracted is Robin looking in her bag? Uh, she's extremely distracted looking <laughs> in her bag, but she is very fixated on her bag. Yes. So uh, <laughs> if I go out and were to like step out of sight and then all of a sudden Maeve were to walk in and say, oh, what did I miss? <laughs> How yeah. likely is it that Robin would see any transformation happen? Oh, sh I don't think so. <laughs> okay. She's an army of dolls. Yeah. <laughs> She's not like dolls. So I'm gonna <laughs> step out of the stuff. room. I'll drop my mirror images, my, okay. my my duplicates, and uh I'll come back in and say what's this candle about? Well, you know, I was gonna try something to see what it's all about, and I'm gonna pull out a mug. That has a Polaris symbol on it. Mm. I'm gonna walk up to the candle and I'm gonna put the mug over the candle. <laughs> oh. uh, not the to snuff it out, to just the candle. Yes, contain it. It does block the light. It starts to shine very strongly and distinctly down onto the ground, um, and uh, you know the taper holder, the candle holder, has a little rim on it. And as you sort of place it down and you concentrate that light very intensely, every so often you just see a little swoosh of something as if it's like underneath, in the shadow beneath, trying to kind of claw its way out. And every so often it gets a little bit further. Well, this will hold it for a little while and I'm gonna want my mug back. So on the way out, we'll just have to <laughs> grab the mug and run. But I, I think it's gonna be okay for now. Um, this is a Robin. Talking, right? <laughs> this, no, this, she came back to being oh, her. She, came back. she okay. couldn't get through the door. <laughs> um, Robin, make me a quick perception check, please. At advantage. Although I would love to be a moose that was dexterous enough to be able to reach into a bag. Oh, oh okay. Uh, you said at disadvantage? No, at at, at advantage. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, that's what's my perception. 16. 16. Um, your dolls are amazing. You're really enjoying your dolls, but there is again, just the little hairs on the back of your neck kind of prickling up, kind of behind you, kind of towards that room where everybody else is. Oh, all right. I, I think I lost count about 12 times and <laughs> I'll just say there's 
enough for now. I'm just gonna put that, put the, she's gonna zip up the bag and she's gonna uh, put it like, oh, it's a little heavier than you. Um, <laughs> and you see that she kind of slouches over a little more. She she holds it and she's gonna make her way over. Ah, uh, did we find something in here? So the candle absolutely gives you some vibes. Mm -hmm. But you're continuing to feel more of these this amulet that's sort of warm against your chest. Again, it's just like there's this little pull, like it's pulling you towards the back wall of that room. Oh, how interesting. And she's going to walk right up to the wall and start feeling around. Yeah. So you wait, what, are there just like a bunch of dead doll body parts upstairs, everyone? Like, <laughs> don't, don't bring it up. Silas, it might... It, there's it a couple might, that have, have been destroyed and one or two that were chewed on. And I'm going to give Pivot the rest of them? A, a very, a very nice thumbs up at that. And then I'll look back at Robin and say, uh, and now Miss Robin has an army. I don't know what that means. Can somebody all, be more specific? All of the rest of the dolls and all of the various varieties <laughs> were all convinced to go into the bag. And the ones that were not convinced, I went bowling for. And now they're, they're in the bag. inside your bag right now, Robin. Oh, yes. Is there a lock on that? <laughs> oh, they're not going to go anywhere. They trust me. I don't trust them. But they're making I mean, them happy, though. Right? Yeah, as long happy. as Miss Robin has control over them, and then the next yeah. time we pull them how, out, the how rest do we of know us are that she has control over them. Because I mean, she went like, get into the bag, and they all went into the bag. <laughs> I watched it happen. <sighs> uh, there is so much wrong with everything that was just said. Oh, now like, he's concerned about magical <laughs> things. <laughs> no, I'm, con no, I'm concerned blue in the back room. about magical ki creepy killer dolls just sitting in somebody's handbag or backpack or whatever this thing's turning into. I I agree, but at the moment, like whatever was attacking you with the candle, they're contained. So let's do what we got to do and get out of here before uh, my mug gets broken. The problem is that candle, when we leave this room, that candle's going to stay there. Yeah. But she's got those in her bag. And, that's and her bag goes everywhere with her. Yep, and but for the moment, all the dolls are Robin. They're all just gonna stay in there. Y'all right? ain't maybe making no maybe sense. Maybe have a marching band. So seventy-six oh ton bones. Oh my gosh! I mean, there were oh a my. bunch of nutcrackers. We can give them all. Oh, I know. Yeah. You know, Silas, I think I'm about to show you something you're really gonna like. <laughs> just have this little. It, you're not distracting is this me dolls from this, but in go your ahead. Bag? <laughs> we're all acting crazy right now. <laughs> Yes, yes, Doris. Everybody's Robin, acting really. What, yeah, what Robin do you got, is Robin? just like she's studying this wall. Oh, Robin, you're just like, oh man, I wish I was on the other side of that wall. I just, what, oh, it's what? like that I, amulet's trying to pull you right through the studs. Oh, uh, <clears throat> Robin's gonna go to the window. Mm -hmm. She's gonna. Pull back the curtain. Mm -hmm. She's gonna look outside and be like, "Oh, excuse me, everyone!" And she's gonna <laughs> misty step out. <laughs> Robin disappears and reappears outside the window. Hello. <laughs> okay, I guess she's no longer interested in the wall. Don't let her out of your sight, though. She has a really powerful amulet and a bag full of dolls. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> You figure out why she wants the wall, and I'll go walking. I'll walk all the way around outside to where Robin is and go, all right. okay, what next? Uh, are there any, in this room, are there, uh, now that we can sort of have a, mm -hmm. a, a little bit better look at this room and sort of the walls and the everything in here and the curtains mm -hmm. and everything, because we're not imminently being attacked by yes. a shadow creature, is there any place that the, the walls look... Um, Different, or are there any furnishings here that you can be an investigation the candle? check? Okay, no furnishings other than the candle and the, the curtains, but yeah, give me an investigation 19. check. 19. A 19. Um, you see, sorry, in, uh, dirty 20. Dirty 20. You see, in the corner, very, very small, hard to see, a little mouse hole. Oh, of that. Background. Um, can I peek into that and see what 
yeah, as you bend down and look through, you see. Hey, 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 hey. All right. I cannot resist this opportunity. Sorry, I've got to interject. When I say Maeve do this, yes. mm-hmm. then I am going to minor illusion a mouse that comes out of the hole and kind of like, <laughs> uh-huh. like at her. Maeve, do you want to make a wisdom save? Sure. <laughs> Uh, an 18. An 18. Um, <laughs> uh, Silas, you giggle uh, as you do this <laughs> and give yourself away. Uh, <laughs> Maeve, just as this little mouse comes sliding up, uh, she just seems to under- know that it's a... So then, then the mouse kind of like sits back on its haunches yeah. and then just crosses its arms. Hello, Mickey. <laughs> So as you're looking through this little mouse hole and there's a little cute little imaginary mouse sitting there with you trying to scare you (laughs) as it tries to do that, um, you can see straight back about six inches, the width of the studs, there's another room, another bit of space, a little bit of of light. You you can see the glint of maybe something, something shiny just beyond. And do I see any place where there might be a mechanism or is it? I mean, with the investigation check, you saw the mouse hole. Do you want to do onto another investigation check for this area here? Sure. How, how are you investigating? What is your, um, how, how are you checking it out? So I guess the first thing would be to see if that's a tunnel or if mm-hmm. it's, um, if it seems to open up. And then the other thing would be sort of following the the edges of the floor and the walls to see if there's anything that's hinged or that's fantastic. Um, yes, give me an investigation check for that. Uh, seventeen. Seventeen. Um, it seems to be a straight shot. Um, you know, this is just right directly across. Like the mouse has just made a tiny little straight hole through uh, on either side. Um, as you begin to kind of run your fingers along the seam and the wall and along the baseboard, um, your fingers slip through the wall. Is it? And I'll sort of... Your hand slips through the wall. Almost as if it was just missed. Whoa, it's like a hologram. I knew a couple of people that had these installed in their houses. Holograms? Yeah, you know, like instead of using like the bookcase method or something, they paid a lot of money. Like, first of all, we used it to bring back Tupac. Next, to make secret Uh, doors. After that, there's no telling where that technology is going to head. All right, so we'll Probably pause not here. Probably short installation. <laughs> we'll pause here. Robin and Neb outside. Oh, what would you like to do? <laughs> All right, Miss Robin, what were you up to? I, I, I'm still figuring out this whole Spidey sense thing, but I swear there's something. Here. And she's like knocking <laughs> on the outside <laughs> of the wood on the door on the, on the wall. Um, fantastic. Give me a quick perception check at advantage again. Okay. Uh, that's an 18. So that room was little and you're like, wow, this wall looks longer. Like you're really getting a sense that there is space at the back of this room that is not accounted for in that room. And as you go around the back, you see that there are no windows in this little corner. Um, it's just like a totally, uh, you know, enclosed corner here before you get to the window that looks in and the, the smokestack that looks in on the kitchen. So there is a corner here that's sort of unaccounted for. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, what do I have? Okay. Um, can, can I do any sort of like intelligence check to kind yeah. of see if like, Robin, Robin might not know like if she needs to go back inside or if she can do something from out here. She's probably not putting it together yet. Right, right, right. So it's definitely th- there's no obvious entrance or anything from out here. Um, 
You can give me another. You can give me an investigation. Uh, yeah, give me an investigation. This one won't be an advantage. But just can, can you can I help? help with that? Yeah. yeah. What's your I'll, intelligence modifier? Uh, that's a plus three. It's a plus three to your roll. So that's a dirty twenty. A dirty twenty. So the two of you looking together, something about your sparkly sense, uh, Robin, <laughs> brings you down towards the dirt. And Nev, you sort of follow her lead, and as the two of you kind of begin kind of brushing away some dirt and, and digging down around there, you begin to see um, a small window that has been covered over with the dirt. Um, and as you brush away, almost like a basement, like a little, you know, window that would be up at the top of a, a basement. I forget what those are called. Well, a little well window that has been filled in with dirt. And you begin to take it away. You can see there's a small window. Um... I look in. Can Robin look in? Can she see anything? As you go down and kind of, yeah, press your, your eye up to it, enough little bit of light are coming in. You can see what appears to be maybe stairs heading down into a basement. Um, and <laughs> something on those stairs are a little sparkly. Again, not much light is getting in there, but something is like reflecting uh, within that space. Ah! Shiny, and that's all she needs. And she can see. She can see Ooh, enough. Misty steps right in. <laughs> Robin ah. disappears and reappears. <laughs> Sorry, Meb, if you're looking, you just see Robin suddenly, you know, with her backpack, you know, with her hands like a scout leader, you know, just sort of on the stairs just beyond. I'll offer two, Maeve, as you're kind of looking through the mouse hole and stuff. Maybe you hear suddenly uh, Robin you know, inside <laughs> that room, standing on the stairs. Hello? Neb's gonna. We'll come back to Robin in just a minute. Yes, Neb's to gonna just sigh a little bit. And I, I gotta learn how to do that. All right, I'll be there in a second. <laughs> I will go walking back around You're the around. house and back on in. I don't know where they're Past gonna be. All but... corpses. Okay. Yeah. Uh, back into the room, Maeve. Yes, you heard Robin appear. You think just beyond there. Hello. Robin, what are you, you talking hear Maeve to say me? hello? Yeah, what are you talking to? I thought I wait. There's like a hologram someone. here, right? Yes. There's a and I'm gonna, are we gonna go through here? I'm gonna go ahead and sort of peek my head in behind where. All that... right. Your head moves through the wall. It appears on the <laughs> other side. You see Robin standing oh, on the God. stairs, kind of trying to take in her surroundings, as you do as well. There is a small landing and stairs that go down into a basement. You can see across the way a tiny little well window off in the side um these stairs there's a couple of little pieces of gold a couple of little pieces of jewelry oh robin it's very exciting but boy are you getting some tingly feelings from downstairs in this basement so I, as I, Maeve is uh yes. poking her head you're through, seeing literally si like si she's been beheaded so oh, yeah. Silas then like floats up and goes like parallel above her and then pokes his head through like full on ri River Tam style. Right. Um, just or like the Stooges. Lo looking around. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and it's like, Hello. oh, this is a weird, weird place. And then he, <laughs> Silas is going to keep floating. It's like floating Disneyland. Through. It is exactly like Disneyland. You float through. Uh, you are there with Robin. You can see just some of these little pieces of jewelry and gold sort of stepped on these stairs and, and they go down into the dark into kind of a basement area that's just out of view. I feel like this is the hey, moment are, are that we... Neb oh, comes back into the yes. room, sees the headless people. Just, yeah, yeah lusts at... and legs sticking out of a wall. Looks at Feruza. I guess they found <laughs> an a door like, I don't know. Well, uh, Robin found a window and, and did the whole thing in. Yeah, where into, did she go? Well, she's in like a basement, I think. And I figured you there's got to be Robin another. Robin in a basement. And I didn't, we can hear this. She left me like up. as if they were right there. Right, right there. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't leave her. She left oh, she's me. She's right here. She you just apparently hear through the through the, the her hand wall. does I, this thing. You know, right here. Yeah. She left just me, keeps but then in and out of the wall. <laughs> apparently, she's with Maeve. That's a cool <laughs> trick. No, just here, give me your hand. It's just you. Yeah, you can just uh, there's not. It's it's here, but it's not here. It's. I feel like this is starting to become more and more of a candidate for where a mirror shard might be. I mean, I might be wrong, but I'm really, really curious now. I'm about to thunder wave this entire place if you guys don't tell me what's going on right now. Just where walk is the through rest the hologram. 
But the Tupac that... Hulk. Third Hulk. <laughs> yes, yes. Tupac Hulk. Okay. And then as she starts to walk up to it, Silas yes. is going to minor illusion Tupac, like a five foot <laughs> version though, because uh, you know he can't do much more than that. But it's gotcha. like a little Tupac. Like, so okay. yeah, so Faruz, as you come up and you're tall, you can feel it's solid above. You have to kind of stoop down to about three, four feet. Um, but yeah. Silas and Maeve, do you make room for her so she can come in after you? All right. Okay. So now the three of you are standing on this landing above Robin, who's on the stairs. Neb, you've watched mm -hmm. them disappear through this crawl space hole in the wall. <laughs> um, Robin, do you want to go down? You're kind of at the head of the group here. Yeah. Robin's, Robin's like just nonchalantly going yeah. down the stairs and anything that's shiny, she's just like nonchalantly just putting it in her pocket and just grabbing it. And <laughs> Put it in your pocket as you go down. There's a lot of shiny. As you come down and turn the corner, it is quite dark in here. Do you have dark vision? I do not. Do not. It's quite dark in here. Again, you just make out little reflections of shiny things in this room that oh. are bouncing off the little bit of moonlight that's coming through that, that well that's window. Let's get a better look and and Silas just... is going to oh you're, okay. you're doing it. Robin's got it. it. Dancing <laughs> lights and four lights will just spread out. As they spread out, you see the entire footprint of this home has this little root cellar. So it's not very tall. It is just dirt, but it has been packed to the brim with all kinds of weird, beautiful stuff. You see jewelry. You see gold. You see, um, you see do more dolls. You see clothing. You see pieces of metal. You see old weapons. You see uh, anything that sparkles and and shines is is sort of you know within this mess, this pile of stuff. This C, this this what is his name? Uh, uh, Money McDuck. What was that guy? Scrooge. Scrooge <laughs> McDuck. <laughs> And his nephews go swimming through the gold. That is what this room is the closest thing it looks like to Robin you. was his just... half cousin, Money McDuck. <laughs> <laughs> Money McDuck. Money McDuck. <laughs> okay. Robin is just gonna like grab her, her at her chest, just gonna be like, Oh, we gads. I I and she's like she's just like the hairs on her neck are just yeah. like <laughs> she's just you just hear static. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't know where to, she does not know where to go. She's like, uh, doesn't know where to and start. At, at this point, uh, one Pac, um, the, the, the short <laughs> one kind of comes in and then uh, like through that, Silas is just practicing for his, you know, one man uh -huh. stage show uh -huh. eventually. But it's just, <laughs> she's on a mission and she's wishing someone could cure her greedy condition. And uh, he, he keeps like just riffing on uh, all this stuff. And, and then he just, uh, and then Silas, as that's still going on, turns to the others and says, I think like this was really useful that she found this place, but I think she's really going to be a problem if only someone had mentioned that before. Yeah, uh, you were oh, right, no. Maeve. You were right. You were right. <gasps> and Maeve sort of like takes that, <laughs> takes it in, and then lets it go, and stop stops being a jerk about it. <laughs> nice, very nice. Yeah. Outside, because Neb still hasn't gone on in. Where's Pivum? Oh, Pivum. No, Pivum's been with them in the. Oh, he's still a badger. Yeah, little honey badger's just going down. He's like he can. He'll look up at you and kind of shrug, like do the do the. What is this thing? Mm -hmm. You know that symbol with his little his little oh, honey badger hands. Be like wanna. I mean, I guess I'm... it seems to be the popular place to go, and I'll follow the honey badger. All right, and the honey badger so... will just walk through the hologram hole in the in the wall and come up on the other side. Yes, ma'am. Is there anything here that? indicates who's this might be. Mm. Good question. Give me an investigation check, please. Okay. And then as this is going on, Silas doesn't care about this stuff too much. Mm -hmm. He cares about mirror shards. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he is going to start just kind of floating around. He doesn't want to touch anything. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But he wants to float around and get his face as close to things as okay. he can. You can give around. me an investigation check as well. Uh, okay. Maeve, what was yours? 23. 23. Nothing has like a name tag on it or you know anything like that that's real obvious, but the pieces start to click together in your mind. Robin took this amulet 
from another creature that was obsessed with collecting things. The dolls called her mama. And it's starting to click into place that this perhaps could be a hoard collected by someone else and hidden away for safekeeping. Someone well, we know be, the someone you may be turned to dust. <laughs> we know the owner. This place oh, no. isn't coming back, so we're not in a hurry. Yeah, but but at the same time, like, is anybody else just wondering? Like, this is the first time we've come across something that wasn't on this train track that like had I don't know some semblance of a person living there. Um, I mean, they might not have been a person. I don't know what they were, but. But like, if this is where they actually lived, they, they had an actual home here and we haven't seen this yet. You think they're gonna come back? Well, no, I think that we completely annihilated her out there near the lake. Oh, this is like, I think that's, place. I think so. I, I, I mean, unless there's somebody else, but we have come across so few people. So are we thinking this is a Wicked Witch of the East situation where there's going to be a sister who's really angry? Well, maybe she's the we... good one, though. No, I... Mm. Are we thinking there's going to be a sister who's going to be really angry? No, I think this is something else. And, and Neb is mm -hmm. taking a long look at Robin, who I'm assuming you're still standing there in, in overload shock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why do I have? Why do I have a feeling that... The last person from Erte to come here got distracted. What do you mean, Ned? Well, we've wondered about us being here and that it's mm -hmm. on purpose. And I've been thinking, okay, this has been set up for a whole bunch of challenges to see how dedicated we are to getting it to the end of this. And everything that's been in our way has been things to try to stop us. Well... What if this stopped someone? What if the person who used to own this necklace, they got distracted doing this? Oh, Miss Robin, we can't let this happen to you. Uh, what? <laughs> I think I'm going to need a bigger bag. <laughs> no. Do not open that bag while we're in here. Yeah, while you've Seriously. got this. Seriously. You know what? Everyone, it's, 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 you, you, you guys should just go. And you can just leave me here. It's fine. I can look over the gold mixture. No one else takes it. This is, and this is how it's going to go down. Okay. Why would anyone yeah. else take it? They won't. <laughs> I think that's, what, that's who are you talking about? Or who what am talking? I talking about indeed, Neb? So you want us to leave? you and you're not going to come with us i think that depends are you going to be taking anything from here i would like to just oh. take you i'm gonna take this and silas is going to grab <laughs> like a, a whole like telekinetic arms oh. armful oh. of stuff and like start to float it toward him fantastic and, and then he's doing his best jim carrey liar liar in person <laughs> i'm taking this best <laughs> Uh, Silas, did you do that investigation check while we were talking? Uh, 21. 21. As you do that, as your, your, you know, invisible hands pull up a, a you know, clump of all this fancy, shiny stuff, <clears throat> um, you uncover something that as you've been kind of looking around, catches your eye. And it's something that you recognize. It is a crowbar. The one that was on the train that you oh, had from the scavenger hunt? From the scavenger hunt. Uh, I dropped the rest of that stuff and I, <laughs> I want to grab the crowbar now and, and start floating it. But I'm still like taunting Miss Robin a little bit of like, I'm taking this because I want to see what she does. So you drop everything else and this rises up out of the space. And as it comes closer, you can see it's got the little numbers on the side. It is absolutely the crowbar from the train. Wait a minute. How did this end up here? Y'all remember this thing? Was this the is what we used in the 13 crowbar? I don't the remember, but maybe. <laughs> I, yes, I can look back and find out right. later. <laughs> I'm going to, as you do that, I'm going to reach into my bag and I'm going to pull out the tiny little number 18 because I took that with me. Oh. I'm going to go, well, I mean, it, it matches of all the different types of crowbars. But yeah, I mean, how did it get? Do you think she stole stuff from the train while we weren't there? 
She might have been on the train based on what you said earlier. Oh, that is creepy. Meanwhile, Robin, you see Silas is attempting to take a shiny from this place. He is topping it. <clears throat> this is my crowbar. <laughs> what are you, oh, you going to do it? about it, Miss Robin? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Robin is, <clears throat> she's just going to kind of put her hands on her hips. And she's going to say, I want you to think about that again. And she's going to vortex like... warp you up to the top <laughs> of the stairs. So you can roll for it. If you want. If you want to not do it. Silas is definitely rolling. <laughs> he oh, is, no. he is. This shall not stand. She's trying to Silas. send you to the dunce corner to it's think a, about what you did. It's a con <laughs> save. A con save? That's good. I'm glad it wasn't wisdom. Um, so that is an 18. Yeah, you win. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. She tries and you... She <laughs> tried to attack me. Did y'all see that? She's completely off her gourd right I now. I didn't like, try to attack you. I tried to move you. Even the fact that you're arguing with me right now, there's something wrong, Miss Robin. There's something wrong. I... You need to take that off. I, I don't... I, no, I can't. I, I need What this. would Harold I say? I, if Harold saw you right now, what would he say? Well, I suppose he'd say, Darling, it's just stuff. My pops used to say that to me, too. I understand exactly where you're coming from with that. And I like stuff a lot, too. But what's happening right now with you, this, this necklace is making you into something... Uh, like, you don't want to stay here. We want to go. We want to rescue Ivy, right? Yeah, we, want we don't to... want you to turn into that creature that we took the necklace from, that attacked us, that tried to kill us. <sighs> You're right. You're right. But I, I can't help it. It's, it's like eating me up from the inside. I don't know what to do. So like, and, and Silas looks to the others now and is like, so is this like where we like take it? Or is that like crossing well, boundaries? Or I'd what like, do we do well, I, Silas, I'd like you to make a persuasion check with that Herald argument. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. That is a very good roll. Not, a, not quite a 20, but then uh, let's see. You said persuasion? Yes. Ooh. Um, so that is going to be a 27. Cool. Fantastic. Robin, that is enough for you to make a wisdom saving throw to take this thing off. <laughs> okay. Good luck. I forget Good what luck. I have to beat, but here it goes. That is a, it's a 17 on the die. It's a 17 on the Yay. die. You are convinced to take it off. Not necessarily to hand it over, but you are convinced to to try removing it from your neck. Uh, Robin will reach for it and kind of pull at the, it should pull it up over her head slowly and just be like, oh, Harold, I sure hope you didn't see me like that. And she's As hold you it. hold it, you can feel the heat of it in your hand. It's almost like it gets heavier as you try to lift it off over your head it's like the weight of it is increasing as you are able to pull it off and you hold it in your hand and you can start to feel a little bit more like yourself now as long as it's in your hand there's a desire to put it back on um but you've removed it for the moment si silas is going to just reach out his hand but it's not like his hand he's reaching yes. out his real one but then there is kind of another right. hand like out and it's like, hey, like it, hand it here and we can put this where it belongs. And and seriously, don't worry about Harold. If he loved you half as much as the stories you told us, there is no way that he's going to be faced by this. No, I think what he saw was what you did just now. That's it. But the shard, we haven't found oh. it yet. I forgot that's the reason. It's, well, it's okay. No, no shard is worth this. Also, I think you you got us to the place. Like, I think it's pretty obvious it's in here somewhere. At this point, I don't think we need the necklace. We just need a couple of minutes in our own hands, right? Well, you you don't you don't know that for sure. I don't. It, but it, you know it, what? It, I'm willing to give it a try if it means that you're not going to have to worry about the necklace anymore. 
We haven't had a necklace when we found the other shards. We can do it again without a necklace. Do you guys feel like making persuasion checks? Yeah. How about you do I it together? One roll, it. and we'll add both of your persuasion bonuses. I'll even allow the proficiency oh, if you have it. Here we go. You, sure. you want to, Lauren? Yeah, you you roll it. I just did, so I got an eighteen. An eighteen. What's okay. your? And that's with your uh, bonus. Plus, yes, that's and what's my. Plus, pers- what's your persuasion bonus? Uh, plus eight. Plus eight. So we're at yes. twenty six. Yeah, Robin. Ooh. They they're they're giving you all the reasons why you should hand it over to Silas at a twenty six. Up to you. Uh, Robin, feeling this like tug on her heart, mm. almost like coming up into her throat, trying like her heart is trying to reach out for this amulet, and she's just gonna hold it out and then just like pry her fingers <sighs> off of it and let it drop. And she's gonna take three steps back as it drops, and Robin takes three steps back. Silas. Mm. I, I just telekinetically uh, uh, catch it, and then as um, as I'm pulling it into my own hand, I want to uh, I want to basically pocket it and and make it look like I made it disappear. Okay, but it is on your person. It is on it. It is on my person. That Quick wisdom correct. saving throw, Uh-oh. please. Okay. Uh oh. Wisdom's the good one. Is this a fear or charm effect? I oh, like this question. This question. Um. It's not a fear effect. Is it a charm effect? Probably. Yeah. Go ahead. You, okay. whatever, you get well, a, whatever your thing is. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. good. Okay. And uh, that is a 20 on the die on the okay. second one there that I rolled. So um, that is a 19. You resist. <laughs> uh, for now, it is in your pocket. You can feel its warmth. But right now, you do not have an urge to put it on. And all I'm trying to do with this is I, I don't actually um, have a desire to have it. I mm-hmm. just want to um, put it in a place where uh, Robin will not easily find it. So sure, sure. I'm, I'm pocketing. I can I'm saying while it's on urge. your person, you <laughs> have an urge to put it on. Um, right okay. now you are resisting that urge. Okay, in this moment of resistance, yes. what I'm saying is <laughs> as soon as soon as yeah. I feel like I, I mastered it, because yes. again, what happened here yes. is I felt myself succumbing, yes. and then I went to a different room in my mind palace, yep. and, and I was able to do it, and I recognized that, and then I am going to like basically telekinetically sling it into a corner uh, oh. and try to make that like less gotcha. see, like unseen is what I'm gotcha. trying to do. Gotcha, I'm gotcha. trying to so do no the close magic. It. Yes. You're no longer pocketing it, you're getting rid yes. of it. Okay, fantastic. Um, let's do a sleight of hand Excellent. for you to sort of hide it magic, you know, uh, close up magic it. hand. Um, that's a 23. Boom. You sling it behind you. It slides behind another, you know, couple of things and sort of drops out of sight for someone else to find someday. And the Jumanji drums <laughs> go off in the distance. Uh, One of the paper dolls. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Um, you were in a room full of treasure. What would you like to do? I'm going to look over at Feruza. You want to help me dig? Dig, like, just dig what through this stuff, for? I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, oh, I, I, like Scrooge, yes. But maybe you know, I think I think never say money we'll McDuck. find the shard here. There's, yes, there's yeah, money, like know. Money McDuck. I am Money McDuck. Money McDuck. Absolutely, that's what everyone watches. Childhood cartoon, Money McDuck. I don't know if I can go swimming through it, but let's give it a try. Friendly edition of a. Of the cartoon we all watched as children, it was yes. Money yes. McDuck. I think that was Luck I think tales. it was Money McDuck for Halloween when I was a kid. <laughs> Luck tales. That's right. Luck tales. Yes. But I'm not interested in any of the gold. I'm only interested in, in that shard. And yeah, okay. I'd like to like if if I see Fruza going in one direction, I'll go in another. Yeah. And I'm just gonna start looking for mirrors. All right. If you're all looking, kind of thing, just give me investigation checks. Okay. <laughs> not Nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. We have a 19 from Robin. We have a one from oh, Silas. God. No, just a nine. A total of five. Oh, okay. oh I'm a nine. I'm sorry. A nine I'm out of 19. Oh, sorry, Maeve. I, I'm a 19. A 19 from Maeve. I'm Nef. also a 19. 19, Feruza. 18. 18. Hey. All right. 
I think it makes so, sense that Silas and Robin are the ones who are very distracted at this moment. <laughs> very distracted. Uh, they're dealing with their their stuff right now. And yeah, basically as that's going on, like Silas uh, just comes over uh, to Miss Robin and again, just very, um, he is trying to suppress as much uh, patriarchy mm -hmm. as he can. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and he's trying to be sincere is what I'm yeah. saying. And he just kind of like cups, uh, you know, the side of her arm a little bit and says, I know that Harold would be really proud of what you just did right there. I think he'd be proud of you too. Oh, I would have loved to know him. And then Silas is going to start talking about oh, like, cool. yeah, they would have been like bros, like, you know, <laughs> like the, lo lots of years between them, but still bros and, you know, that kind of thing. Meanwhile, behind you, your friends are furiously digging through gold. <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> Nev, in your quest to find the mirror shard and looking for it, um, you uncover a little, like, jewelry box. And you open it up, and inside <gasps> there are diamonds. Just dozens of diamonds. And as you pull your hands and pull them up and start to look at them, one of them looks a little different than the rest. Oh, these are very pretty. It's not what I was looking for. Uh, and I'll I'll pull the one out that looks yeah. different and kind of hold it up. Very clear, beautiful. You're like, ooh, that's a diamond. And as you begin to kind of look at the other ones, not that you have a total like, amount of like knowledge of this, but they have like a weird like backing. You're like, oh, these are like costume oh. diamonds. These are like fake diamonds, but you're pretty sure this one is real. This is very pretty. I'm gonna drop the other stuff. <laughs> this is not what we're looking for. Um, hey, hey, uh, Robin, Silas, just just in case I'm doing a bad thing, are you okay if I just take this one diamond? It kind of looks like a star. Hey, take whatever you want. Like I, I got bunches of money. <laughs> oh, it was less about the money and more about the last time one of us picked up something. It was cursed, and now we had to go through oh, the whole thing. Know. So I'm just uh, I hey, don't want to be. We've defeated a cursed item now. Like, we can do it again. So, you know, like, try not to get a cursed well, item, but, like, nobody knows what's going on with this place. Let me just take a quick look at it. I can identify, make sure it's not magic or anything. Okay. I'll hand the diamond over and then go back uh, to looking for the shard. Just just a quick arcana check from you, Robin. I'll yeah. Be, before do you do a... anything, just do an arcana check. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's a, where's my arcana? Oh, plus 21. 21. Not magic. This is it's yeah, okay. just a diamond. <laughs> it's a very I, beautiful diamond, but it is just a diamond. I think you're a good kid, and just gonna flick it back. <laughs> and you okay, go back good. to looking. Okay, yeah. Maeve, as you are digging through this gold looking for something, you don't come across the shard, but a ring grabs your attention. The it is a gold ring. The gem on it is almost like it's moving like there's a little like storm cloud of purples and blacks and stars inside that gem and as you pick it up and look at it inscribed on the inside of the ring it says starlight star bright first star i see tonight <laughs> you put it on yeah i do it tingles a little bit you're fairly certain there is some magic about this. You're not quite sure yet what it does, but boy, does it feel right. Cool. Cool. All right. For um, Ruth. Oh, go ahead. If, if it's okay, are there any um, yes. nails or rivets or things like that in in this pile? Or, oh yeah. Or anything metal? metal. Absolutely. Or there yeah. are nails if I can or bolts. grab some some little bits and bobs yeah. of those. Um, Absolutely. Just, just just a couple of random little things that I'm casually uh, just gonna. You got. You all have a little bit of the collection. Pocket for bug. funsies. You yeah. Get it. Not not much. Nothing that seems super valuable. Just cool. Just little bits and pieces. Um, Feruza, as you are digging through the gold, um, you find another Nutcracker doll. But this one does not jump up and attack you. Yes, you hold <laughs> your kids ready. This one is beautifully painted, pristine, much more expensive and fancy than the other ones. Um, and this one, while it has the Nutcracker, uh, you know, jaw, it's almost kind of like a, a soldier nutcracker, and it has symbols between its hands, almost like those symbol monkeys, but much less creepy. 
Uh, <laughs> but it does have like, if you say so, if I say so, uh, it does have like, like cloth clothing, like in beautiful embroidered fabric that's on it. it looks very sort of royal, regal, kind of nutcracker creature with this, with these symbols in front. Just grabs your attention. Oh, I think you're muted. I think you're muted, Elysia. <laughs> right, because I keep laughing at you guys. I don't want to be like laughing in the middle of so keep doing that stuff. <laughs> um, she sort of, you know, she sheathes her axe mm -hmm. and she... You also kind of recognize it. It looks a little yeah. bit familiar to you. Okay. And she's going to reach for it and she's going to mm -hmm. be like, lift it up and go, where, where did you come from? And how come you didn't try to kill us? And she's going to be like, to turn it around and realize that it looks like one of the nutcrackers in her aunt's house, one of the many she was not allowed to touch as a kid. <laughs> um, and it sort of brings her back to like, you know, her childhood. Uh-huh. So she's going to, I think you're a good one. And in her messenger bag, she's gonna look around and see if anyone notices and look over at Robin to see if Robin notices since Robin has all the dolls. And she's gonna put <laughs> in there and then continue looking around. All right. At some point during the little conversation yes. between Robin and Silas, Silas yeah. is going to be like, oh, hey, and, you know, I think you've got a bunch of creepy little murder dolls in your bag now. <laughs> so, like, I, you know, we're going to have to deal with that at some point, probably. Oh, right. Oh, I I don't even want those. <laughs> I, maybe I should just set them loose. Uh, well, maybe ooh. set them loose when we're done here. You know, at a farm somewhere, a nice farm where they can yeah. run free. Is there Near an the upstate around here that we can go to? Is it... uh, Robin, I might suggest, so once we're going to leave here, maybe dump them out here. We'll close the door behind us. And then on the way out of the candle room, I can take my mug and we'll close that door behind. Well, no. For what that door? Well, we'll just leave. <laughs> We'll just leave at that yeah, point. Yeah. We'll just leave all the creepy stuff here and then maybe like put a sign on the outside door <laughs> warning other people, you know, don't go inside creepy and what people? dead here. <laughs> <dolls. laughs> Listen, we showed up, right? <laughs> I mean, pivim has been around here for forever. We showed up. So I just feel bad leaving a cursed item and a bunch of creepy dolls without a sign. I don't know why. Yeah. Very fair. Never change. <laughs> As you all are searching through this space, taking your time, you know, you're, you're digging through, you're trying to find anything that feels like what you're here for. And somewhere down underneath all of this, you finally come across it. What? You find what appears to be a crystal clear music box. Inside, oh. you can see a shard of mirror. It looks to be just the right shape. It is a sealed, closed music box. Even looking through the clear, you know, whatever material this is, you can see the little mechanism, the little locking mechanism. It is one of those music boxes that has those little pluckable uh, tines, but it is yeah. missing the roller. The roller is not there. Oh, uh, okay. Anyone see the, the little roller? I'm gonna start looking for. The what is little... a roller? Like, what does a roller the, look like? Oh, it's the, the crank, the crank the, with the pins, and, and it goes. Doo, 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 doo. Yeah, so the it, 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 it and plucks it... it for it as it turns. The roller turns, and it plucks those little tines to make the music. Yeah, so, uh, Silas, I'm have you ever afraid seen I'm those... not going to be much help because <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Still. Silas, have you ever seen those player pianos that just play by themselves? Oh, uh, so yeah, cool. I think we saw one earlier in that creepy zombie place. <laughs> yeah, but that was being played by a zombie. No, so they work on the same principle. Um, yeah, you know it smaller. wasn't actually playing it, right? I mean, it wasn't playing it well. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was being played by a zombie. No big deal. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, I was also getting uh, attacked by it at the time, so I wasn't really paying yeah. attention. So no, we're it's it's going to be a little metal, usually metal cylinder about like this big, and it's got it's going to have little bumps on it. It's going to look very metal cylinder with bumps. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah, but, do like, that. And I'll I'll indicate the size of what the cylinder in the music box should be, and then start looking. You all start. I'm going to take the crowbar and I'm like yes. floating the clo crowbar the and crowbar. just like scooting things over yeah. and like parsing it out. You guys search for like 20 minutes and turn up nothing what? like that. Is it shiny? 
can maybe we put the necklace back on? Oh, the oh, oh, did the candle no, have any no. bumps on it? <laughs> the candle did not have any bumps on it. Oh, okay. Um, do we need it? Has anyone tried opening it yet? Oh, we I went smash it open. <laughs> I mean, Silas has try a crowbar. It telekinetically. He's it does try to not open. open. It it's definitely, uh, definitely locked tight. I mean, Silas like, has a crowbar. Locked tight and because this, it's missing this thing. You know, it's locked tight. This thing is definitely the 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 locking mechanism. You can, like I said, you can see through like it's plexiglass, right? The yeah. locking mechanism is definitely attached to these tines, um, okay. you know, to just give it to you, presuming that if you plucked them in the right order, like a like a lock, it would pop open. Um, you you know, you can try with the crowbar. You can do what you can. It is pretty impenetrable. This thing was designed. Can someone yeah. draw what one of these looks like incredibly detailed for me? Uh, if you check chat, someone put a picture of it. Yeah, yeah I did. But, <laughs> but the thing is, each one is individual. It, yes. the, the bumps change what the song is. So exactly. we need to know the so song. So I can't just pull one from Star Stuff or whatever, from Hammer Space, like I do some of these other things. I mean, you could, but Maeve is right. We need to know the song. Yep. This Can sounds this like song? a two-part adventure. <laughs> <laughs> As you would say, Silas, right? Possibly, but I mean, at the same time, like, are we just like, why don't we just start singing songs that would, That's would gonna work? It's going to take us forever. Maybe out of curiosity, it like yes. fun. how many times are on this music box? Um, sixteen. Ooh, Silas, the, the number of permutations it's going to take in order to pluck the right song is, is going to be impossible. We're going to have to just find the song. Uh, Are there any songs that I we've mean, come across? I mean... It, 16, it's two octaves, right? right. Yeah. Wait, okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. Jen's going to stop. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. Oh Lauren God. is also like... I know, Lauren's ringing the same way. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying my hardest right now. I gave you guys a music puzzle. Come on. I, I know, know I, I know, but Neb is not a musician and Lauren is, so I'm having that moment. Uh, she but, probably read something on the internet one day. Too. Everybody's players. an expert after they read something on the internet. That's right. Listen, I'll, I played a little bit in, in high school and that was about it. I, I don't know, but... Oh, yeah, it's a actually, lot of notes. Wait, hang on. Wait, does Maeve, does Maeve have? Maeve Silas plays knows the a little flute, bit about music, and Silas knows music. Yeah, I'm sure once we find or know what I, song I know it music, is, we could... but I I don't know music boxes. I don't know what we're yeah. looking for here. Think honestly. think of uh, Silas. At this point, we're just looking for a song. Yeah. Well, uh, what does that even mean? Like a physical anything? song somewhere? <laughs> So, like, I don't understand. I thought we were looking for a little metal there, cylinder with bumps on it. Are there any things... Are <laughs> you got us stumped. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, We're at the end of the hour, but I'm going to look to get through a thought here. Are there any things either that seem to be common themes about the the items here or or thematically about the the place that we've been in that might resonate or about the style of the i mean obviously the box is clear but let's that might... do let's do a an investigation check of just like a mind memory jog if you're like thinking back through the last hour give me that all can we can we all do that? Familiar. You can all put your heads together, yes. Okay. Okay. So we'll get one fantastic giant. So you're all just gonna give your intelligence bonuses. Okay. Okay. To add to the roll. Your intelligence bonus. Plus bonuses. three. Plus three. Not also, yet. Not rolling. Six nine. I think Maeve is already. Maeve is gonna roll. Nine. Yeah. So the six nine ten. So, Faruza, what's your intelligence modifier? Modifier? It's a minus one. So you won't help. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. So we're at 10, so a plus 10 to me. So it's a 27, 27 all up. So it's Maeve that they're thinking, and you're all like, well, what about this? And you're kind of trying mm -hmm. to put things together. You start to think about upstairs in that shadow room. And there was just nothing in there except the curtain. Something about the curtains, they had a funky pattern to them. Cool. 
that you didn't really notice before. We should look at that when we go back upstairs. Silas is going to fly up there and grab a curtain right now and pull it, <laughs> run it well, down. If, if Maeve I says it out loud, he, he does that. I'll run after Silas. Don't pull it down just yet because if it's like music, we're going to need to know what order it's in and I'll follow him upstairs. So you follow him up. You run up the stairs. Any of you who want to follow, rush up these stairs, climb through this hologram wall space as you get into that room where Silas, I guess your light's still there, right? He's just hanging out, lighting this <laughs> room. the there. candle with the Polaris mug on top of it. You can see now as you come up and check it, the shadows are reaching much further out. They are getting much closer to finding their way out of this little, you know, confinement. As you look over at those curtains, you begin to see in the pattern, there are letters. Specifically at the top of the first panel, D-A-A-E-D-D-A-D-D-E. And with that, we will leave you this week of Children of Vente. Oh, Thank Lauren's you got it, yeah. So much. I adore Lauren's you all. Please remember that itself is the most wonderful fairy tale. Good night.